I'm joining forces with my old college professor today, Dr. John Nelson. He is the head of the A. C. Moore Herbarium at the University of South Carolina in Columbia, South Carolina, and we are with his spring flora class, and they take field trips. John, we look like we've got a pretty good place for a field trip. Where are it's we? It's a really great place, and uh, first of all, I'm so glad that you're with us today. Uh, today, we're going to be um, looking at the uh, botany, the plant life along the Broad River, and where we are specifically is right at the upper end of a, a very extensive walkway, a greenway, uh, that's a part of the um, Columbia Riverfront Park. So you, we can hear the rushing waters at the Broad River uh, Diversion Dam over there, over that away. And uh, right behind us, I think we can see the um, old Columbia Canal, which of course that's where Columbia gets its water. I think there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff out there this time of year. Let's get those kids and head them down the trail. Okay, let's see what they're looking for. John, this looks like an area that gets inundated periodically. What do you? What are the common things that you see in this sort of situation? Right, Amanda. This is what you'd probably call a natural levee environment, and there are there are quite a number of uh, native plant species that like to grow in a place like this, especially woody uh, species. This is so, a pretty beautiful one. Right here, we're we're sitting on top of this beautiful sycamore, and you're leaning against a hackberry. And both of those are perfect examples of plants that like this environment. Um, this is one of my favorite trees, and um, it doesn't. You have to, sometimes you have to look up to see the beautiful patterns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When it's young, it look or it's lower down. Sometimes you still have the bark on it. Right, and I, not only for a sycamore, but just about any plant. You can't just look at one part to really understand how it's best identified. But um, you need to be able to look at um, all of its parts. And that's what I try to tell my students to do, to take the whole uh, appearance of the plant in. So this is the, these are the new leaves on the sycamore. Sycamore, right. With those sticky buds. Sticky buds <laughs> and um, very interesting leaves that will expand tremendously um, once they really get going. So it's kind of like people, there are a lot of ways to identify. Sometimes it's a freckle on our foot and sometimes it's um, attached or detached earlobes. That's right, you know, it's like trying to identify species and then realizing there's variation among species. Just like with people. Right. Yeah. Well, let's see what's farther down the road. Okay. I bet there's some mystery plants down there. Mm -hmm. John, it's amazing what we've seen today right here on the outskirts of Columbia. Right here on the outskirts of downtown Columbia. And one of them was a little spring wildflower that has a that has the apple in the name, but I don't think it's an apple family. Right, Amanda, that's the, um, the well-known May apple. It's not really a rare species, but a lot of people don't commonly see it. It's a little plant that's actually related to Nandina. It's in the, bur the barberry family and uh, it has some very peculiar uh, biochemical properties so that it has been used medicinally quite a bit. Well, one of my favorite trees because one of my, um, on, my, on my bucket list is to work out and have, have muscular arms and ironwood is such a fabulous, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but ironwood doesn't have to pretend to pump its muscle. Tell me about that tree. Musclewood or ironwood is one of my favorite trees in the forest. Likes to grow in wet places, especially in the bottomland hardwoods. And uh, the wood is so hard, it will dull an ax. If you wow. ever try to uh, chop one down, that's why they call it ironwood. And then musclewood or muscle tree, because as you say, the uh, sort of rippling effect of yeah. the wood 
underneath the bar. John, this looks like, um, in your phrase, vinorama. <laughs> um, there are vines <laughs> on everything. Why is this? Vinorama. This part of the world is known for a rich assortment of woody vines, and uh, we can certainly see them around here. And I know that we've already seen the, the native ones, the wild grape and supplejack and, of course, poison ivy. Mm -hmm and cross vine, and there are others as well. Then there's some, unfortunately, in this area, we see that the invasives have a pretty big foothold. What are some of the ones that are really problematic? Well, you know, we could stay with the vines if you wanted and just refer to wisteria. Oh. Uh, Asiatic wisterias are never welcome anymore uh, in natural areas in the state or anywhere in the southeast. And uh, beyond the vines, there are a number of invasive shrub uh, species, including um, a terrible thing such as Russian olive mm -hmm. and then um, privet. Privet, of course, there's several species of privet that are getting worse and worse. And, um, and even um, the ground cover ivy goes up the trees. Doesn't right, it? Yeah. and I guess that we'd have to count uh, English ivy as a woody vine too, but yeah. it really is an awful, awful pest. Fortunately, there are many wonderful things here, and we are ending. We ended our walk by seeing two beautiful native trees in full bloom. Right, it's time for our beautiful red buds to be flourishing in the spring sunshine. And of course, red bud is a native tree species in the bean family, and uh, they're they're delightful to look at all year long but especially now with their beautiful flowers. And I tasted some of the flowers on a walk yesterday and they're real mm. good. What did it taste like? Um, it was a nice, slightly peppery taste. I think I'm gonna put some in a salad. Oh boy. And then the other one was a beautiful white, dangling, delicate tree. Right, and that's our lovely silver bell. It's one of a couple or three species that we have in the southeast in the genus Halesia. And uh, it really is a pretty thing with four petals and the flowers always, as you said, dangle. They prominently dangle. Um, or drape, maybe is a more, drape, a more yes. gracious word. Um, <laughs> look at this wonderful, right outside Columbia, we have the beauty of the water, we have the trees, we have the sky, we have the birds, and then the wonderful plant life. Thank you for such a great tour. And tell me, I know you have a lot of these pressed in the herbarium, but there's a lot of information at the herbarium. Right, we have a good bit of information, um, um, words and pictures, and if anyone's interested in seeing what we've got, please, I hope they will go to our website which is easily available at um, herbarium.org. Couldn't be much easier than that to find on the internet. Thank you, John, for a wonderful day. Thank you, Amanda.